Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about creating proxies using Azure Functions. Now, a proxy is just a way of taking one URL and mapping it to another URL so that if you wanted to have a, uh, a back-end web service, have a facade in front of it with a different URL to decorate it. Um, the, there's a couple reasons why we might do this. One is maybe we want to, maybe we've got a URL for a web service that's really ugly and hard to remember. We want to make it a little bit prettier, a little bit easier to remember. So we could shorten it, give the some of the arguments more meaningful names. That would, that would be one reason why. Another is uh, we might uh, have to conform to standards within our organization. And we're given a web service that has URLs that don't conform to those standards. One way to get it to conform is to put a proxy in front of it and then call it with these conventional, those, those ones that meet our conventions and access the, the, the uglier back-end web service. So let me show you how to do that here. I've already created a an Azure Function app and an Azure Function that's triggered with the HTTP trigger. And this is just the default code when I create a new function. I haven't changed it at all. If you want to know how to do this, I have a video on that. It's episode 19 of GCast. Go back and look at that. So in here you can see that what it does is it uh, it gets the, the a name parameter, parameter out of the query string and then it also gets the name parameter out of the body and it says all right if it's in the query string let's use it uh, if it's not in the query string then we'll look in the body and we'll return if there is a name we'll return hello comma and the name otherwise a message please pass a name on the query string and the request. And we can see this right here. Here it's passed in the body. The name is Azure and we get back hello comma Azure. We can do hello. Put foo in there. Hello foo. We can add it. Get rid of this and put it in the query string parameters so that name is John. And we get hello comma John. Uh, this is a little test harness inside of here and since I didn't mean to close that I'll go back to here and bring back up my function app and in here you notice that I also have this URL right here and I can copy this. This is kind of an ugly URL. You'll notice that it has a slash API slash HTTP trigger and the query string is code equals this long good thing here and it's I get this message back because I didn't pass in the name so I also have to add ampersand name equals bill right here and I get hello bill uh, we could create a proxy for this and make it a little bit easier for users to use let's do that let's go into the proxies right here and we'll add a new proxy we'll call it GG proxy one and here the route template is where I'm going to put the, 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 the URL that I want to use. So instead of API slash HTTP trigger one and then the, the query string arguments, let's just go with uh, uh, greet, how about this, greet slash name, something like that. All right. And in our query string parameters, let's just do all this here. We forgot to add a question mark name equals. We'll go with David right there. Create that right here. And now if I say greet slash name, well, let me copy this and put it in here. And there it is. This is hello, David. But I've hard-coded David into the response. I want to make that a variable. So even though I didn't specify David anywhere up here, either in the query string or in the body, I still got David back. And the reason was because I hard-coded it into the redirection URL. Let's make this a little bit more flexible by saying that's a variable. Name equals a variable called name. In fact, to emphasize the variable, I'll say v underscore name. How about that? And then in my URL, I'll do that the underscore name. So these, these curly brackets around the outside, these sort of mustache looking things, that indicates it is a variable. If I save that, now I can actually specify slash greet slash name slash Jonathan. Hello Jonathan. And I get that. I can even be a little bit creative in here and I can specify that my route template should be 
first name, followed by a slash, followed by last name, and then use that as the name over here. Name equals first name. Don't put the slash in there. Put a space instead. And now I got name equals the first name followed by a space followed by the last name. If I save that, now I get a pretty nice URL here. Greet slash name slash David slash Giard. Right here. Hello, David Giard. And so now I've got what was a pretty ugly URL. I've transformed that into a really nice URL that probably would be a good standard for my company to use. It's certainly easier to remember and uh, makes a lot more sense to the user. In this video I've shown you how to use Azure Functions to create a proxy to take one URL and redirect it to another URL. This is David. Thank you for watching.